Hey everybody, hey everybody, hey everybody, how you doing, how you doing, how you doing, how you doing? I hope you're doing well my friends because today, 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 we, as in you and I, are composing the click, the unstoppable force, the immovable object, all rolled into one. We are going to be having the Mike Talks ASMR's very first gaming ASMR collab. We got a bunch of really amazing gaming ASMR artists here today, as well as some ASMR artists who've never actually done gaming ASMR before, but they stepped up to the plate and they produced something really amazing. I can't wait to show it to you all. Enough selling it. I think it's time we get on to the show. So without further ado, let's go Mo. Hi guys, I'm Fluidity ASMR. I'm just playing some Stardew Valley for you all today. Um, I just started this save file, so that's why my house is so small. But I just wanted to start this adventure with you guys. So, let's see, we have some mail. Oh, we forgot to go see Willy. Okay. Okay, well, I haven't even planted anything yet, so let's do that. Got all these parsnips yesterday. So we can make some money. So I chose the beach map this time because I love fishing. It's like that whenever I would play like the GameCube version of Animal Crossing 2. Okay, let's see if there's anything good to pick. Got some daffodils here to give to some of the other villagers. If I run into them. Oh shoot, I forgot to water my crops. I can do that when we get back home. So, well, who's this? This is Shane. He's a jerk. Apparently he's nice if you get to know him, but... Oh, there's a daffodil. I could give it to him, but I don't want to. I only started playing this game recently, so... I haven't gotten to the point where you're supposed to like really get to know any of the villagers, so... I like Willy a lot. I hope he doesn't turn out to be creepy. I just, I just love fishermen. Wish I could be one. Well, I mean, I guess I could just go fishing in real life, but it's not the same as being, you know, like a hardened old fisherman who has tales of the deep blue sea. Yes, we can fish. Except fishing in this game is so unnecessarily hard. Let's see. See, he's just smoking his pipe, doing his thing. I don't know. And I guess you'll also notice that my character has blue, uh, pink hair, whereas I don't. It's just that I feel like my highest self would have pink hair, you know? Oh, he doesn't even want to fish with me. I guess he has to go open a shop. Let's see. Oh. See? You have to, like, Click to keep the bar moving behind the fish. Oh, I'm so glad I got something. Even if it is one inch sardine. Can't embarrass myself in front of all you guys. Let me in. Thank you. Let's give it to Willie. Whoops. There you go. Thank you. Ooh, I've made 187. Whatever the unit is here. Oh, and there's some shelves. Very nice. Oh, except I don't have enough room to carry anything else. Dang it. That's the bad part about 
about starting out in this game is you have to like buy a backpack to be able to carry more things. So you know, this is a kid, right? I'll give her a daffodil. I feel like she could use it. Aw, oh, see, look at that. Let's see who else I can find. Ooh, Emily. like many manic pixie dream girl type. Let's give her a flower. Heart. Glad you liked it, Emily. Let's see. Let's see if we can find the mayor. I think he needs a flower. This is his mansion. Oh look there he is. This is the mayor. Okay. Because I think you're great. Let's see. I think I've met him already. Alex. He's one of the eligible bachelors. Why don't we go? Oh, it's <laughs> 11 a.m. I guess I can't go to the saloon. Oh, Haley. No, I love her. Ah, come back. Even though she's kind of a jerk. See, she's so pretty, but also a jerk. I don't know. Let's see, can I break into her house? I can. <laughs> Can't steal anything though, dang it. I should have used my real character, because I'm really not that far in the game, but I'm having a lot of fun. But, like I said, I wanted to start this journey with you. Let's go back home and water, water my crops. Oh, I hate these. Yeah, I bet you have to, like, take care of the land. Even though it makes me a real farmer, but whatever. My first um, order of business is going to be get an axe that actually works. Wait, does this one work? What? I upgraded my axe in my other game for no reason. Dang it. Oh well, I mean, it's still good to do. I just didn't think that you could chop down trees with it. Well, this has been an interesting day. Oh, look, something else to play. I think I'm just about out of time with you guys too, so it's amazing how fast time can go when you're working a hard farm life. Anyways, thank you all for watching and for going on this little one day of farming journey with me. What's up everybody? This is Sukovision ASMR. This will be my contribution to the ASMR video game collaboration being hosted by Mike Talks ASMR. For my entry, I have chosen X-Men 2 Clone Wars. It was released on the Sega Genesis. I spent a lot of time as a kid uh, playing this game with my brothers. We would try to go through the game uh, without getting hit. This You'll notice that I started off as Wolverine. Um, when you first start the game, uh, it randomly selects a character for you. There's a little, little bit of a workaround with this. Um, if you reset your console, then you can select another character. 
Uh, you just keep doing that till you get the character that you want. Um, since we are on a time limit, um, our title screen here, after this point, you get to select the characters you want. Playable characters are Beasts, Cyclops, Wolverine, Nightcrawler, Gambit, and Psylocke. Uh, later in the game, you can recruit Magneto as a playable character. I will be... I don't know how far I will actually get in the game. Uh, the first couple levels, I feel that it's best. Yes, my, my little baby Shino's here. You can probably hear her purring. Uh, the first several levels, I feel Wolverine is the best to use. Uh, each character has their own um, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I feel Wolverine is the most versatile with a lot of the stages due to his um, maneuverability and his power. Uh, I find that Beast and Psylocke and Cyclops are sluggish and clunky and uh, very awkward to use, especially with um, attacking diagonally. So I'm going to attempt to not get hit at all once uh, you see the, the life meter in the bottom left corner here um, is now full. Uh, when your life is full, your mutant power is more powerful. So there are some enemies that you would not normally be able to kill with one hit. Um, that you can now. Uh, my first Mike Talks video was Blue Marlin which uh, I was in the hospital at the time, so, um, you know, I kind of got stuck on that video. I'd watch it every single day um, before I get to sleep. So I actually went out and got a copy of the game because it, you know, it's very simple, but it looked very relaxing and um, kind of fun. So that was a good investment. I never actually beat this game. Uh, a couple other games I was debating doing for this competition. Uh, Chalk in the Forever Man, Maximum Carnage, Kid Chameleon. Uh, none of them I had beaten when I was younger. I guess when you're younger with these older games, you don't really have an understanding of the mechanics or how they work. Like, I remember spending hours in the arcade playing uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 1989, and I could never beat it. But, but after understanding the mechanics, um, I actually went through the game on the one coin which uh, was a pretty impressive feat. Uh, so yes, yeah, see, I just got hit. So I think we'll get just about to the first boss, which is going to be inside um, inside Master Mold here. I really like these um, action action platform games from the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis era. The, um, the old school vintage games really have a lot of nostalgia with me. You know, remember playing them as a kid, my brothers. So with Wolverine, 
He has this jumping attack here that you know makes him really hard to be hit. Uh, there's a couple levels where you can kind of glitch it out with Psylocke, most notably the uh, third level. Uh, we're going to pick Cyclops for this level. No, the fourth level out front of... Out front of Apocalypse Temple. Uh, the boss of the level, you can swing your sword at an angle and pretty much stop him from hitting you. Um, kind of make yourself invincible. This is the third, no, the fourth time I've had to record the actual video footage, and this is the fifth time that I'm recording the audio. Because uh, I did not... Um, you know, technology was not really um, cooperating. That's it. Alright, and that's it. Boss is dead and I'm out of time. Stay relaxed. Peace. Hello everybody. This is my contribution to the gaming collab. And today we are going to be playing the Guardian Legend on the Nintendo Entertainment System. And this is actually my favorite game. My favorite game of all time. This game really, um, I, I wouldn't be here today, let's just say, if not for this game. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be, you know, I've gotten into programming. I wouldn't be playing games. I wouldn't be doing anything if this game had not just captured my imagination when I was four years old. When I slid this thing into the game deck, I put, I pushed that power button in, and I died, and died, and died, and died, and didn't, get, didn't ever make it past this, this flying level. In fact, I didn't, I didn't make it past this flying level fairly until, uh, that is without Game Genie, um, until I was about 14, and I ended up getting this, um, on an emulator so this is basically we're entering this planet called Naju and this is the planet's defense system these these turrets so with the with that defeated this is the boss of the stage and these are the big turrets so it's important to keep moving and keep dodging these bullets and the more turrets you defeat the faster the other ones fire so this can get pretty pretty hairy the type of game that this is is called a bullet hell or a shoot em up shmup um, and it's definitely not a typical one because it has other other game elements in it which you will see it's kind of a hybrid game and one that although i have a limited knowledge of how to program on the nes um it, this would would have been a, a very difficult game to program actually um and it's because of how the mappers and stuff work out with scrolling and things like that. So we get this message room. If someone is reading this, I must have failed. This star, Naju, was our home, but we were invaded by evil life forms. Everyone except me was killed. I am going to try to activate the self-destruct device. If I fail, I would like you to do this task so this cannot happen to any other race. The self-destruct mechanism is protected by a safety device, which is located in the underground corridors. Remove each seal and go deep inside Naju. If you destroy all ten safety devices, the self-destruct sequence will be activated. I don't have much time. I hope this message will not be read by anyone. It will mean that I have failed. Okay. So obviously he failed. 
So now this is the other part of the game. It's kind of like a Zelda-like experience. It's top down and the scrolling is from, you know, side to side. And we actually don't have enough chips yet. Chips are like kind of a currency and kind of um, in an indication of power as well so the more chips you have the more uh like rows of uh shots you fire with your typical plasma cannon and we just bought a wave weapon and there are mini bosses to fight as well on the overworld maps they start off very easy like this guy is just ridiculously stupidly easy all you gotta do is go to the side of him and shoot and he spawns these little crawly things, which you just shoot and kill immediately. But the game does get a lot harder. Um, typically, the corridor sections, you know how he told you to uh, blast open the corridor as well. That leads to those flying sections like you saw uh, me doing earlier. So now we have corridor one. Now take a look at this panel up here that has a moon symbol. So you need that key in order to get through the panels. And there will be other symbols like that too. And there's different ways to open corridors. Corridor one is very easy. All it does is requires you to fire at it. Uh, corridor two, you have to touch the side panels, which destroys the side panels. Um, quarter three, I think you have to wait in the room for a certain amount of time and then it automatically opens. Quarter four, you have to exit and enter that round creature's room uh, three times and then he'll open the corridor for you. Um, I'm trying to remember everything because some are kind of repeats. I think quarter five, you just shoot, if I remember correctly. Quarter six, you need a purple weapon in order to um, open it. And purple is the uh, maximum power. It goes blue, green, and then purple. And basically you get, you power up a weapon by getting multiples of it, essentially. So, um, you need to spend at least one ship firing into the uh, corridor with a purple weapon in order to open corridor six. Um, seven, I think that's the one where instead of exiting and re-entering the round creature's room to ask him for help, you just exit and re-enter the corridor room in order to open that. Um, eight, I think, is another wait forever no no eight is you set your weapon to no use and then fire like you had a weapon attached to it um nine oh my goodness i don't remember nine you might have to stand on the corridor or something like that it's hard to remember all of them ten i think you just fire into the corridor it's kind of like an anticlimactic thing but but in any case, there's, you know, tons of different ways to do it, um, to, to open the different corridors. And you'll find out um, how to do it by exploring the labyrinth areas. And the guy that uh, basically told you to destroy the corridors to activate the self-destruct device on the planet will... Um, also give you clues as to how to open the corridors now why are you um, activating the self-destruct device because the planet has been invaded by evil life forms and the planet is actually hurtling toward the earth with a cargo of evil aliens so you have to blow up the planet it's almost like an escape from new york type situation here um i imagine that this like they, they definitely could have used this. John Carpenter could have used this for Escape from the Earth or something. Uh, that that uh, final like piece of what would have been the Snake Plissken trilogy that never came to be, unfortunately. So here we have this, uh, this boss here. This is called the Blue Fleepa. 
and all you gotta do is shoot and dodge. Shoot and dodge. Don't let him touch you. His little fish will hurt. Try to shoot him down because they can spawn power-ups. Overall, just don't let the Fleepa touch you. I mean, that's the most important part. And, of course, make sure you collect your power-ups. So just dodge and just keep shooting. Rinse and repeat, and then he goes down just like that. High five, low five, high five, low five, fist bump. And we get the uh, Crescent Moon key. And that is going to be my contribution to this collab. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of the contributions in the collab. And I bid you all a fond farewell and adieu. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today I am going to play uh, Flip Switch Galaxy in Super Mario Galaxy. This game was originally released on the Wii. And I loved this game growing up I love this game and I still I still love this game um, so we're gonna jump into this level that um, isn't too long but it definitely can be quite tricky to get through so let's see if I remember enough it's been a, uh, uh, actually a couple weeks um, since I've played so the goal is to get all of the basically squares yellow but you can only jump on them once to turn them yellow if you jump on them a second time go back to blue. So what I like to do is run down this way. And it's also confusing because uh, the like, you know, in Super Mario Galaxy, um, all the levels are super like um, windy. They move around a lot. And um, oh, we got to jump. Okay, we made it. Uh, it can get confusing with the controls um, as everything kind of moves, but you get used to it. So this thing always gets me, so I gotta really concentrate here. This thing always gets me. Oh, see? Always. Okay, I can't get rid of it, but that's okay. I thought I could. We lost one. Oh. I don't even know how I'm alive. <laughs> I should not be alive from that. Let's go diagonally grab this and diagonally again there we go there we go we got a star relatively quick quick level but um, still a good time so I think everything's frozen and we can jump up here and grab the star I've already grabbed it before so it's not uh, golden but it's still exciting we got a star so that's a level I really 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 enjoy that can be kind of kind of tricky if you haven't played it before. Um, definitely gave younger me some trouble the first time. And I love, like, I'm playing this on the Switch, but I love that I can, like, you know, move my cursor around just like it's on the, on the uh, Wii. Really love that. Um, let's see if we can do it one more time without getting any hearts off. Let's see. That thing always tricks me, but let's see if we can do it without getting any hearts taken off. I think, I think I can. I think I can do it. So we'll do that real quick. All right. We'll skip those and I'll start running. Let's see if we can do this faster. Oh, we didn't. That wasn't good. turn it blue. Oh man, okay. It's okay. There's no lives lost, which is the goal, right? So we're good. We're still good. Okay, now I gotta jump off here. Alright. Now this thing. Up. 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 Perfect. No lives lost. Let's go. And a diagonal jump. Nice. Hey, we did it. We did it. That was really good. I'm going to grab this. This going to. Come on. It's kind of weird with the joystick. We did it without losing any lives. Nice. So, yeah, that's. 
that's just a level that's um, kind of short, but it can take, um, you know, take some skill, I suppose. I don't think I have a lot of skill, but it can be it can be real tricky sometimes. So, yeah, um, I really love this game, and I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me play it today. It's always a good time playing Super Mario Galaxy. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Howdy, friends. I hope you're doing fine. So this is Genshin Impact. It's a really fun game. So the thing about this game, I want to talk a little bit about it so that you guys could get to know it. It's a very open world game. You start off with this character and he wakes up from a coma not knowing exactly how he got here or what's going on he, all he knows is that he needs to find his sister and this game is available on the playstation it's available on pc and phones it's pretty accessible i believe it's free to play unless you're gonna be making wishes which is the way to to get special characters like right here you get banners and you make wishes but you have to spend intertwined fates you could get those through events or just through the game and it's i guess another way to get them is paying money real money i don't do that I enjoy the game, free to play. And here, let me show you the map. It's a pretty, pretty big map. You start off in this area right here, where we are. This is the starting zone. And then you make your way through this area right here. And there's a storyline that goes along with it. And it leads you all the way to here beautiful city of Mondstadt. I think it's a beautiful city. Let's go look at it real quick. Just to show you the wonders of it. So yes, I do play this on my phone also. I play it on the PC mainly, but sometimes I get lazy and I just get on my phone and I play it. But this is Mondstadt right there. This is the entrance of it. And let's just walk, or I guess run in. There's some birds right here. A lot of times, there's a kid that stands right over here. His name's Timmy. And Timmy loves those birds, so don't hurt them. Or Timmy gets upset. And this is the entrance to Monster. Very, well right now it's nighttime, but during the day it's pretty lively. There's craft, uh, blacksmith, I guess. <laughs> Not craftsman. It's a blacksmith. The adventurer's guild's right here. There's this girl. <laughs> she sells some stuff. And it's a pretty amazing game, to be honest. The story's really what catches me. And I'm a big fan of open world games. And this game is heavily inspired by um, Zelda Breath of the Wild like heavily <laughs> inspired by it you could already tell just the way it looks and then also this mechanic you could climb things just like on Breath of the Wild I'm trying to get to the top up here cause this is quite the sight to see up here. And like I said, it's a free game. You could download it for PC, mobile, PS4, PS5. I don't know if it's on Xbox. Um, I don't think so. I don't know. You'd have to check. But, I mean, if you have a phone, you could definitely play the game. So 
love this right here. It's one of my favorite. <laughs> you can climb this statue. It's a giant statue of a deity that they have here. And then you could go to the tip of the fingers and sit and admire Mondstadt from above. And you could see very, very far away. You could see all the mountains which you could actually get to. Like pretty much everything you could see, you could get to. You could walk to it. Or you could teleport if you've unlocked the areas. Another one of my favorite things is the photos. You could take photos here. You could make, open the lens wide. Or make, I guess not opening the lens, but use like a wide lens. So you could capture everything in sight. Which is one of my favorite things. This is how I do a lot of my thumbnails <laughs> for the game. And you could really, really admire the beauty of the game. I love this. The night skies. Absolutely beautiful. So if you play it, you could get to Mondstadt. Pretty simple, I believe. It doesn't take very long. Or we could zoom in too. Zoom in like a lot. <laughs> and see the details of the town. Honestly, it makes it feel like if it's alive. The combat is pretty cool. And yes, you could glide around like in Breath of the Wild. Which is nice. That way you don't just fall. <laughs> the combat's really fun. You get different, every character has different abilities. As you can see, and this is like the ultimate, I guess. You could consider it right there. Another character you get is Amber. She uses a bow, and you could aim the bow exactly where you want it, it thinks. So, she's fun. She has also her abilities. This little doll distracts people and then it blows up as you approach it. Then she has her ultimate. Covers a little area where enemies take damage. It's very free to play friendly, I believe. At least in my experience so far. As you guys have seen, I'm almost at 100 episodes of Genshin Impact. I hope you give it a try, and you enjoy it. It's definitely a fun game to play. Thank you for being here, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye! Well, hello there, this is Afo ASMR, and today I'm playing Super Mario Land 2 Six Golden Coins. I've never actually played this game before, um, uh, to have been able to find it to pl actually play, it's one I've always wanted to play, and I was always, I had a Game Boy when I was younger, but I never had any of the Super Mario games, so I thought for this collaboration I'd give it a go, and I love it, it it's a really great game. Uh, this is obviously only a short amount of footage that you're seeing, but if you get chance to find it as an emulator, I really highly recommend it. it it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. I, I mean, you know, again, you only play as Mario. There is no Luigi. Uh, it introduces Wario, who is um, the sort of reverse map. I can never get those coins. Those two coins, I can never get. It, it's impossible. I don't know how you do that. I haven't worked that out. I don't know why I ducked then. I think I'm trying to work out if I can go down the tubes. Ah, a heart. That gives me an extra life. And the star gives me extra power. Love it. One, two, get the bell. That's the halfway mark. Three. Four, five, gives me one up. 
if you get five in a row you get one up you get an extra life so you know I am a completionist for these games oh just got a fire flower another heart I am a completionist for these games I will try and get all the coins if I can as as you saw though I uh, can't exactly get all the coins those two coins still elude me whenever I play this game Yeah, as I say, I'm a completionist, so um, I do try and uh, get all the coins if I can. The controls for this game are actually rather decent. I, uh, I'm i quite impressed, really. I mean, obviously I'm playing on a keyboard, because this is an emulator. And here, am I going to get the bell? No. And I do this every time. Always jump at the wrong point. Always jump at the wrong point. <coughs> the bell gives you like a bonus level. Now, which direction am I going to go? To the left. And I think, yes, we're going to the tree zone. I know all these. I've worked out all the names. So, let's try level one. Yeah, those moles pop up, and you need the fire flower for a number of these levels. It's better to have the fire flower than um, the bunny ears, which which basically act. There's there's no um, raccoon or tanuki sort of suits in this game. It's very different to uh, the other Super Mario games. Much in the same way, I guess, that the first Super Mario was. So, am I going to get the bell? Yes, you need to get the bell, because that's the halfway point. If you lose a life, it starts you off at that point, rather than back at the beginning of the level. So, um, you know, completionist. There we go again. Always a completionist. Now in some Super Mario games, like Super Mario Land 3, uh, which they adapted for the Game Boy Advance, which I did have, or do have, because uh, I do have a Game Boy Advance, um, you actually sort of collect the power-up. So if you accidentally hit... See, so you have to be a smaller size to get those coins, so... Um, you do lose out some completionist value because obviously you have to be willing to lose your uh, or be close to losing a life. So, you know, it, it, it's darned if you do and darned if you don't. Now, am I going to get the bell this time? No, I missed it. You just have to time it just right. So here's zone two. Now, this, this one's tricky because this is like some sort of gel-like thing that slows you down. It, it helps you in some sense, but it, it also hinders you in another. And you'll probably see that in this video. It, it, this isn't my favourite level. This is not my... I've played this a couple of times. And um, to be honest, it's it's not my my favorite level because of this stuff that slows you down it's it's it makes jumping very very difficult see i've just lost my power up so i've just lost the fire flower through the uh, tube they do help with jumping they so you still get the the um the bomb uh, creatures. I think this is the only game where uh, Bowser or um, King Cooper doesn't see. You can see it's really difficult to jump. They, and of course, to avoid the spikes, you need to keep keep jumping. So it it makes it really really difficult this level. 
unfortunately you do have to play this level in order to uh, complete the game so you know it's not it's not uh, completionist friendly shall we say and of course if you run out of time um, you do lose a life but this is not the greatest of levels I might do some more videos in the future of this game and show you some different levels but um, yeah it's it's ah no 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 I've just lost my uh, power up and you need the fire flower I don't know if it's a fire ah see this I think is a fire flower but the, again you can see the jumping is just for this level is just awful 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 and I think I think I attempt this jump several times and still fail. It, it's almost impossible because you literally have. Ah, no, there we go. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to West Coast ASMR. I hope you enjoyed the collab. For my clip, I'm going to be playing a little Bloons Tower Defense 6. Let's get into it. I think I'm going to hop into the challenge browser and check out some of the expert challenges.
positioning. See, we need the cannons to get a shot on these burst of ceramics, but they just don't.
guys. So today we're going to be playing Super Mario 64 on the Nintendo 64. But there's a little bit of a twist if you haven't already noticed. We are using the Usama practice ROM, which um, was created
16 star speed run. There are lots of very advanced strats to get through this level, such as pole glitch. Um, obviously, I didn't show pole glitch in this run. Uh, I've only gotten pole glitch a handful of times at, um, within hours of practicing it. I, I wouldn't dare try to use it in a run yet because I'm uh, completely inconsistent with it. But if you're interested to see something super impressive, definitely look up Super Mario 64 Pole Glitch. I skipped a big, heavy chunk of empty space there, but I just wanted to show one BLJ to, uh, to show how Mario gets through the 50-star door. And the 70-star door, you do the same thing. Well, it's not a door, it's an endless staircase. sky, which is where more runs choke than um, I'd care to admit, at least in, at least in, uh, in my experience. But right here is a, uh, a very difficult part. You need to really be exact with those jumps, or you'll slide all the way back down to the bottom of the level here. So this uh, non-stop category doesn't have too many active runners. People don't spend a lot of time running this this category, but um, the world record sits somewhere around 10 minutes and uh, some, probably like 10 and a half minutes, I believe. It's, um, it's somewhere around there. Nobody has cracked the 10 minute marker, but I don't think anybody actually thought that the 11 minute up throwing Bowser here. Three throws. And, uh, and that's that. Super quick run. It's all a lot of fun. It's really hard, but it's definitely worth learning. So if you love the game, check it out. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the collab. Hi, I'm Nina, and I'm showing you around Sea of Thieves. So I really enjoy this game because it's really cool to chill out with too. So I'm just gonna what have we here? show you a little voyage or quest that I like to do. Um, even though this can be like a really like hyper game, it's just nice to do a chilled little part to myself. So I'm just gonna do this little gold voyage. So welcome to my quest. I like to do the um riddle ones because it really interests me and you have to sort of use your brain um not that i use my brain a lot <laughs> but yeah so um, i'm heading off to sunken grove by putting my sails down and off i go so the mechanics of this game sort of really interests me because you can do it by yourself or you can like sort of teamwork it with multiplayer um I've done my ship in the uh, like penthouse sort of work, which is this sort of black shark bite sort of facade, which I really enjoy. I also love using this boat because I can just sneak around the back and have a look at the map, which you'll see me do a couple of times. Um, it's easier than sort of running downstairs. So sailing on the seas, it's sort of really chill, it's just really soothing, just listening to the waves sort of crush over the boat, um, yeah, I really enjoy that, so I'm just coming up to the island now, and I'm just raising my sails, so that I don't, like, break my boat, <laughs> which is something that I do quite commonly, um, so yeah, this is me doing a little panic of making sure I don't hit any rocks. Uh, yeah, uh, parking isn't my forte. So I'm off to find the chest. So I'm going to have a look and see where I can find this. Um, so let's have a look. Let's have a look around the island. Um, there might be some skeletons, so I'll get my sword out. Do you know a bit of swordy stuff? Swordy stuff. <laughs> um, 
I'm just having a look around the island right now, seeing what's going on. As you can see some skeletons have appeared, so it's time to just take them down before they take me down. Oh, get attacked. Two against one. Bit of a That's cool. So I've now found a hidden cave, which is like a sunken grave that they've asked me to find on the riddle, and I'm just something. So, as you can see I'm in the right spot because that little green section to appear and now it's just have to find the treasure. So just have a read of the riddle as you can see here. Let's go and find our way out of this area and find where we can get this treasure. The dynamics of this game are really, really easy to use. You can use keyboard or mouse, or um, you can use a controller. So I use a controller because it's just easier than keyboard and mouse for me. Um, but yeah, let's find that treasure, shall we? So I think I've got the right spot. Get my shovel. Oh, it's kind of tense in here, so let's give them a, a fight. So I don't know why skeletons eat or where their food goes because they're skeletons, but you know. Um, so now I've got all the skelly boys. I can uh, oh, only the sneaky one left. Oh, one in the bushes. They are just a pair. So many skeletons are just a pair. <laughs> So in the background you can see Captain Flameheart, who is um, one of the major bosses that you can fight. Um, he has a really good fan, I'd definitely recommend it once you've played a few times. Um, what I really like about this game is it, like I said, you can play as a group, you can play it by yourself, you can you know, do quests of a variety, you can be a reaper which is sort of hunting other people down to take them out. You can come across other people on the servers, you can fight them, you can become allies, and it's just sort of a nice, nice game. So I'm going to head back to the outpost to sell all the loot that I've just found on the island. Um, so, sails down, let's get myself pointed the right way, and off we go. So... The clicking of the end is just really nice. I don't know, does anyone else really enjoy that? Is that just me? <laughs> so, off we go. So, yeah, the waves are the nicest part of this game. Just listen to them, it's so soothing. So here I am at the outpost. Just ready to sell the loot that I've got off the island. So you sell it for money, or gold, or reputation. And it can go, depending on what you've got, it can go to different people. Um, different quests from different people, meaning you obviously give it back to them. It's Pretty, pretty cool. Um, so down it goes. So this is me parking. Not too bad. I'm just gonna look to get the stuff and up I go. So if I go to the outpost to sell my loot. Um, because of gold, I'm up to the gold holder. So open it. Sell it. And see the amount of money I get for it. And then you can actually sell these chests as well. They, they sell. And now I'm just going to sit here and watch the sun. 
Um, so thank you for being with me while I show you around one of my favourite games, which is the Sea of Thieves. I hope you enjoyed it.
able to do damage to my opponents every time any creature dies. Any creature other than Poison Tip Archer himself. So if I were to sacrifice my creatures, it would do damage to my opponent. If I were to destroy one of my opponent's creatures, he loses its he loses his creature plus takes damage. It's it's quite a beautiful thing. Two other creatures that I like to use that help me sacrifice some of my creatures to damage my opponents are a Thalid Omnivore and Whisper Blood Lyrgust. Um, both of those allow me to sacrifice creatures um, for different reasons, but both are great in this deck. In case my opponent ever wises up and decides not to attack me so that I don't lose creatures, tries to prevent the loss of life to his to his uh, life total, I can just decide to start taking out my own creatures and picking away at his life points while Tender Shoot creates more and I can just keep repeating that tactic. enjoyed this quick gameplay this quick match thank you guys for watching and thank you to Matt for letting me join and be part of this collaboration thank you guys I'll see you guys next time later hi everybody and welcome to this video with me ASMR Whisper UK this gameplay I am versing the computer I am blue the computer is red and it's me to kick off this round of war if you haven't played Worms WMD this is one of the newer uh, adventures of the Worms universe there are a couple more games that have come out recently even creating their own version of, let's say, a sort of rumble, uh, which is basically like a online platform similar to Fortnite, where you can be online players and take them on. See you later, mate. So yeah, you can play on an online platform against, I think, around about 20 players. This is relatively saga. I started playing Worms when I was probably around nine years old with the very first game with my friends. Later on, I think when I was about ten, Worms Armageddon came out. Now that was probably one of my favourite at the time for a good few years until they bought out Worms 3D. Worms 3D is as it sounds 
it was a 3D version. You were a lot closer ranged in a 3D world and it was extremely fun to see the game in a different perspective of uh, the 2Ds that was Take that sheet to the face my friend. I decided to play this one know how to aim in a lot of aspects of the game. They are quite difficult. I think you can turn down the difficulty, uh, difficulty or turn it up. I think this is on um, average or um, yeah, it's definitely not easy. Let's see this play out. I was so careful to try and make sure that I didn't laser my own blue player on the end there. All glue, no gun. I was to burning my own worm buttocks. Thank God I survived. With Worms WMD, this was the kind of first uh, game that brought out vehicles. You can have robot droids that you can walk around, jump around and do powerful punches on other worms. Or you can use the tanks. There are also drills um, there are helicopters and everything else that you can fly around on. There's also a artillery of uh, little points on the map where you can have flamethrowers. But before I go into that, this watch this okay. beautiful move with a holy hand grenade. That worm did not know what just hit it. Let's definitely show a replay on this move and a little bit closer to this beautiful. <laughs> Watch that ding. Oh, yeah. Oh, my damn. Goodbye. I mean, that was just, you know, I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed doing that. Goodbye, Newton. <laughs> but yes, the Worm Saga is brilliant play on a, uh, you have a single player campaign. You also have a local connection for playing against yourself, uh, computer players, or you can join your friends online. You can also uh, join an online uh, group and play as a team against another two players or up to eight players, I think, online. Saga is very fun against uh, friends and family and kids alike. My son loves this game and he is now 12 years old. You can have hours of fun. You can choose different landscapes to your own choosing. You can go from medieval Just for the sake. 
week of I don't know really I just felt yeah it looked like a good map but you can change it from small medium large you can add more buildings you can add your own weapons and you just play it how you need to the campaign is also actually really good in this game there are many challenges for you to take and uh, basically system will earn you points that you can then upgrade and buy different costumes for your worms, different voices, different lands, and you just basically just continue like any other game, leveling up. I thought at this precise moment in the game to finish with a great move, but I realised that the holy hand grenade wouldn't work. So I took one for the team, my fine fellows. Me tools about. It was a risk I was willing to take with the banana bomb. Oh. One worm sacrifice for the rest of his team. But what a move. What a finishing move. Einstein did not know what just hit him. Well, he did. Technically, it was one of your five a day to begin with. And then I think it turned into seven. So I think you've just uh, completely had your week. Let's see that in a How's it going? It's Thamcam, and this is Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo, but being played on the Nintendo Switch. I will attempt to beat the first world in the game, Congo Jungle, as quickly as possible. I'd like to take a moment before we start, oh, we're already starting, <laughs> as we start, to thank Mike Talks ASMR for having me as part of this amazing collab with a bunch of other amazing ASMRs, many of whom, like me, specialize in gaming ASMR. familiar with me, you may know me as Famcam ASMR over here on YouTube, or Famcam360 if you know me through Twitch. We are down one, and we have four levels to go, plus a boss battle. So far, so good. So let's, uh, armadillo here make our way up here so that we can get donkey kong back in the battle i'm gonna let donkey take over so i can jump on these armadillos without getting knocked off that didn't go well <laughs> that's okay it's become a meme over on my twitch channel that if you type exclamation point speed run, of course you died. If you type exclamation point speed run, the bot says, of course you died, just like now. But you know what, that's okay. We had just hit the checkpoint, so we didn't lose much progress. All right, oh my God, I gotta pay attention to what I'm doing. Whenever I'm in speedrun mentality, I tend to screw up, so it is a challenge not to do so.
when the pressure is on. The pressure is on. <laughs> oh, not this time. I made it. You almost ran me over. It's really strange how when a little armadillo runs into you, it hurts. We're not talking to Cranky Kong. Even though I love stopping to talk to Cranky Kong, because he is hilarious. He, um, he says, back in my day, our video games had four pixels on screen. <laughs> Imagine that. Imagine what kind of games that um, you would have with four pixels on screen. The only game I can think of that exists that would work with such a um, such a setup is Simon. But I absolutely love Simon. I love brain teasers. Almost at the end. I missed the end, but that's okay. Not going for lives, just going for time. We're still under four minutes into it, and we're already at the fourth level, making great progress. Perfect. That's okay, that's okay. I took a hit, that's fine. I'm gonna go, um, this way to get our friend on guard the swordfish because that way I can uh, blast my way through the level faster and safer donkey is back he's back in action y'all oh no 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 I remember when this first came out the graphics were just beyond phenomenal. I couldn't believe that a game like this would be able to be on the same platform as a game like Super Mario World, which Super Mario World is my jam. That game made me a gamer. But the graphics of this game and the graphics of Super Mario World are night and day. Super Mario World just looks like a pixelated cartoon, whereas this, while still pixelated, is like an introduction to 3D graphics characters and, and the uh, land were 3d modeled and pre-rendered it's like it, it was like a an introduction to what games would be like in the future and and i'm quoting the um instruction booklet of the game donkey kong country is only the beginning and it was games to follow were made like that and continue to be made like that obviously not all games are that way we still get some 2d games especially from the indie industry. Indie industry. I should say sub-industry because the industry as a whole is like all the games, obviously. But, and I failed to jump. The one, frust the one really frustrating thing about this game is that if you're at the edge and you jump, it often doesn't register. You gotta jump a little bit early. There's a lot of input lag in this game really is. There we go. Oh my god. Okay, that B actually saved my life and I uh, blew it. <laughs> Let's try that again. It's time to fight the boss, which is Very Naughty. <laughs> That's his name, Very Naughty. Very Naughty's lair. Yes, 
just gotta jump on him a bunch of times while he laughs at the camera as he's getting bounced on. And we did it. Thank you so much for watching this ASMR semi speed run where I died a good few times. <laughs> like I always do in speed runs. I hope you enjoyed this. Enjoy the rest of the collab. And as I always say, stay chill. Take care. That is the end of the ASMR gaming collab. I hope that you all enjoyed it. Special thanks goes out to everyone who participated in this collab and everyone who came to the premiere today. It is the first premiere for Mike Talks ASMR. Um, and I just want to say something else in closing because I think it's important to have some sort of final thought or closing commentary on this collab. Um, gaming is obviously a very important part of all of our lives, which is one of the reasons why we do what we do. When I was growing up, gaming was looked at as something just for children, something even that maybe children shouldn't even be playing, something that you would only play perhaps during a rainy day. Um, and I would constantly get berated for it, and I know many of my friends did as well. Um, but th the fact of the matter is, I wouldn't be here if not for video games, nor would I be here if not for ASMR, but that's an entirely different topic in and of itself. But I feel that none of us really would be here if not for video games, even those of us who maybe don't do ASMR gaming as a regular thing on our channels obviously wouldn't be in this collab right now if not for games, but gaming is such a huge part of our lives. It's how we relax. It's how we unwind. It's how we have fun. It's how we meet people. It's how we interact with people, especially given this pandemic and having to isolate and be away from families and things like that. I think that Gaming has allowed us to connect with our families and our friends and our loved ones. And I just think that it is such an important aspect of society nowadays. And I am so happy to be a part of the gaming ASMR community. The community that brought you this wonderful collab today. We all came together and we worked on something together and look at this beautiful piece of artwork that we've all contributed to together. That is the gaming community. That is the ASMR community all coming together and doing something that's just great, something that's just beyond what one person can do. So I just want to thank you all again and I hope that you have a wonderful night. Good night, everybody.